Hope is contagious, and that's why it can spread. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group, part number four of this five-part series, Standing for Truth. Today, we look at being cheered by hope. When we're looking at the great controversy, we recognize that light is always dominant, even though it might appear that darkness is. No, it is always the power. And through Jesus Christ, we can partake in that experience. So knowing this, that we have a hope, the hope or knowing that there's always a B-side, there's always a tomorrow, that way of thinking is contagious and it can spread. It happened in the Reformation, it's gonna happen in your Reformation, and it's gonna happen in this world before Jesus comes. But before we go there, thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Please subscribe to the channel. Visit us online at changeministry.org. For this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and we appreciate you passing this on to someone else, especially if you know they can use some hope right now. Hope is contagious and it is contagious because it is able to transcend or break through any apparent barriers. So think of a desperate situation or a situation of despair or a darkness. We've learned that light, it's not even a competition. It's just a reality. Wherever light is, there can't be darkness. Darkness must go because darkness can only be where there is no light. Hope is the same way, which is why the enemy attacks it. Because he knows, because he knows, and if we can remove hope, then we're only going to have despair. But if hope is present, if hope finds a home where that despair is, despair has to go. And not only does it have to go, but that hope, that light sheds and spreads and breaks out of those barriers for all to see. In John chapter 11, when... Mary and Martha were at their lowest, right? Jesus says to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. They just lost their brother. And Jesus says, he that believeth in me, even though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Jesus didn't say, uh, don't have sadness. I know you're sad. Jesus didn't say, uh, I wonder where you are. He knew where they were. They were in despair. So what Jesus does in the midst of their despair, he counters it with the greater truth. It just so happens the truth was that he's the resurrection. So he's saying, wait a minute, this is where your brother is, but I'm on the other side of that. I'm the resurrection. I am the B side to this A side. I am the tomorrow to this dark today. Jesus provides hope beyond the right now. And when they chose to believe it, Jesus raised Lazarus. In Romans chapter five, verses three to five, not only so, speaking of us, the believers, but we glory in tribulation also. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, I thought we'd grow after. No, no, no. We glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation work with patience and patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. There it is again. When the spirit of God shows up, wherever the presence of God is, there's going to be the power of God. And one of the benefits, one of the fruits of the power of God is hope. No matter what the situation is, I'm with the creator. I'm with the one who is able to not just shift situations, not just shape situations. He can start an entirely new situation. So I always got hope. There's always a B-side. There's always a tomorrow. Now in Titus chapter two, literally the word is used this way, hope, where it says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify to himself a peculiar hope, zealous of good works. Titus is being encouraged to look, look for the blessed hope, meaning that it was somewhere where Titus wasn't looking or it was perhaps somewhere where even Titus himself was not. Jesus is calling 
through his prophet now and telling us, look up, look beyond the circumstance. And what happens is when we have this hope, we give others hope. When we look beyond right now, that makes someone else say, well, what is he looking at? And they start looking over. And when they catch a glimpse of light, when they catch a glimpse of hope, it is contagious. It moves others to look at what you're looking at. Because when they see the smile on your face, and even if not a smile, when they see the peace on your countenance, they know that that power is not them. That's the power of God. I want to know what you know. And when they know what we know, they can believe what we believe and then they can live what you are living. That's the power of hope. And I pray, like Titus 2 encourages us, to look at the face of God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. That is your hope.